Sports Magazine, it's all about out with the old and in with the old. In Saskatchewan, we have many ways to reduce, reuse, and recycle. From vintage clothing to construction supplies and old cars, we find new uses for our old stuff. Oh, this is exactly what I need, <laughs> and it's the right price, too. Hello, and welcome to another edition of Max Magazine. I'm your host, Brad Grass, and today's episode is all about stores that take stuff that people don't want or need or fit and resell them to people who want them or need them or fit them, which is why we're here at the Habitat for Humanity Restore with handsome young Gary Kendall. Hello, Gary. Hi, Brad. How are you? Good, good, thanks. Glad so, to Gary, have you. I'm glad to be here. You're the manager here. I'm the manager. At Habitat for Humanity Restore. You and your smiling, helpful staff. How many do you have we on have staff? We have six staff, uh, seven including myself. There you go. To help well, you out. These helpful people can help you with whatever your needs are when you come to Habitat for Humanity Restore. We'll explain more of what they can do for you as the episode goes on. But they're very helpful like the people in our next story. Sometimes artists have great ideas, but they don't have the stuff to put those ideas together, which is why they go to the Alt Art Depot in Saskatoon. That's a place that gets all kinds of stuff that people don't want, and they resell them to artists to make incredible works of art. Check it out. Well, this is Alt Art Depot. It started oh, a year and a half ago. I came across the idea from a class I was taking in encaustic painting in Victoria, BC. This lady that was sitting beside me had all this cool stuff and I'm like, where did you get all this cool stuff? And she said, oh, there's an art supply restore in Vancouver that sells all kinds of offcuts and remnants and paper pieces and whatever manufacturers don't really want anymore. So she collects all the stuff and has it in the store and all these artists go there and I said, whoa, we don't have that in Saskatoon. We should do that. It means trying to divert anything from going to the landfill that you could make something out of it, transform it, to even to the point where you can't even tell what it was initially. It's about just rethinking, like when you're going to buy something, do, do you really need that, that object? And what are you going to do with the package that it's in? That's the whole byline of the store, like restore your creativity, right? Like rethink what you're doing with your creativity. Are you going to go to an art supply store and buy paints and canvas and all that? And if that's what you do, that's great. But if you're looking for a new way of creating, maybe rethink just plain everyday objects, ordinary everyday objects that you could use to create something with. I've been making art since the early 70s and I've always felt an urge to keep trying different things. So I haven't like done one thing throughout my career. I've worked in a variety of materials from carving stone through to welded steel and casting bronze. I really like found object. Uh, found object is a good opportunity to Take the crap that society throws away, you know, that is still good. The students are playing with it here and some of them are really having fun with it. There's a few things hanging around uh, that you can look at. Um, this piece here, for example, I can just hold up and uh, I don't know if you can see it, but I mean, it, it's just like, this assignment was, I gave every student all of these materials to play with, the same materials. You know, this plastic piece, some of this webbing, some of this cotton cord, and a few things like this. That was all. Straws, pipe cleaners, and to make something out of it. And this person made this, which I thought was really... And they had to use all of the pieces. So that was the assignment, and this was a successful end result, I think. You get ideas out of looking at materials, particularly if you're a sculptor. Uh, and you, you're working with objects and you want to put them together and uh, well, you like that element. So wow, this gives you an idea, right? So if you go to a store like Shelley's, it's there in front of you. You can kind of just look at it and say, oh, that would go good with this. And I've got this thing at home that would go good with that, you know? What I would say about her store is all of it's useful for making art. So what do we have here? Well, here is a little 
crab I did. He's got some little bubbles going on and some seashells. Alt Art Depot means quite a bit to me because it's removing stuff from landfills. It's getting people to express themselves in unique ways. I'm not a person that likes to throw things away. I believe everyone has a use for something even if you don't. So, I mean, that really ties in well with the, the shop and like I love coming here and finding random dowels that I think I can use or pipe cleaners. You never know what you can make. And that's the joy of art and of places like this that make it accessible to people, it makes it affordable to people, and it inspires them, really. Well, I did this one because Easter's coming. It's a nice little thing for children and you can just flip it open and then write your little cart, your message to your daughter or son right there saying how much you love them. Happy Easter from the bunny. Found a chick for ya, you know. <laughs> I guess getting into paper crafting, I, I really liked cards, but I don't want a $10 card that means nothing from a store and you're gonna throw it away. So I started making cards for my own family members. You know, everyone I've given away, they say they have in this drawer because they just can't get rid of it because it's so cute. I mean, there's so much more, it's so much better when it's a personal homemade card. I try and, I try and go with the flow and just see really whatever sparks me. It really helps having the uh, cricket. It helps cut things out. Um, I can, I don't use, like I don't get rid of scrap paper at all or anything like that. Everything can be something. <laughs> One of the things we love about Shelley is she is such an active, you know, integral part of the society. She loves to do things with people. She loves to do things for people. She is doing this store and, you know, inviting people to be creative, to use materials, upcycle, to, you know, try and push the boundaries of, you know, what do I do with this thing? How can I make this into something beautiful? So we have a couple of samples here. This is actually a piece which Shelley did. She is a member of the Sisters of Fire and it's a artistic blacksmithing group which is uh, women who have come to love fire and flames. I'm a member as well. And this piece over here, which is made from rebar, is by a, another friend of ours, Jason, who also did the piece in back, which is recycled from a metal cabinet. One of the things that I did personally was when I discovered that she was opening this store, just so happened that we were downsizing. And I have been collecting stuff for years as an artist. So it was like a wonderful opportunity for me to take materials which, you know, I know they're good. They have a life, but they just didn't have a life with me anymore. So I brought them to the store and they're available for sale. And I hope that you'll come and you'll make something with the stuff that I donated. So, you know, it's, it's a wonderful opportunity to either purchase materials and create, or if you are a creator that has too many materials, this is a wonderful place for you to donate. If anybody wants to donate, they're more than welcome to bring stuff down. If they're not sure what to donate, there's a list on my website that will give you an idea or give them an idea of what they could donate. And if they have a question, just call me and I can say yay or nay, but most of the time it's, I'll take it. Boy, oh boy, Gary, you've got everything here. There's uh, electrical, plumbing, there's lumber, appliances. Where does the Habitat for Humanity Restore get all their stuff? Uh, we get a lot, a lot of our donations from local businesses in town here mm -hmm. and uh, a lot from uh, residential as well. Oh, nice. So mm -hmm. everybody in the community just kind of pitches in. Yep. Have you ever had uh, anyone donate auto parts? Uh, yes, I have a little story about um, uh, not too long ago we got a, a jack for a 53 Porsche in here. Oh, nice. Um, so yeah, it didn't last long. I, I uh, advertised it on the internet and it sold right away. Snapped right up. Uh, yeah, we yeah. also had a steering wheel from a, a sailboat that had come in a couple of years ago. 
Uh, <laughs> which it didn't stick around either very long. It still had the original price tag on it and oh, never man. used. They've so. got everything here at the Habitat for Humanity Restore. Although, I, I gotta tell you, if you're looking for some real good vintage auto parts, look no further than Clavet. Our next story takes us to a couple of brothers in Clavet, Saskatchewan. For the last 26 years, they've been taking old clunkers and, and renovating them, but they have been on the leading edge, the cusp, the forefront of environmental conservation where automobiles are concerned, even before it was cool. Uh, Amigo started with uh, as a hobby, I guess, for the brother and I. Uh, late 80s, I guess. We became incorporated in 1989 and uh, started as a hobby. Fix our own cars. Uh, Sell, start selling a few parts, you know, then we buy more, sell more, and, and uh, continued from there and started, uh, and it subsidized the, uh, the farm. Uh, there were three of us, the brother and I, and, uh, and uh, the parents. Uh, the farming just was enough income to, to, to sustain all of us, so the hobby turned into a business. 26 years ago when we started, I think part of it was we'd go around the countryside for an extra dollar, we'd uh, Pick up scrap vehicles and have them crushed, and then as a you know, then we started selling parts off those vehicles, and and uh, it, it became more of a parts you know selling the parts, and when they were junkers, totally dead, you know, nothing strippable on them, we would we would uh, crush them up. Uh, so the parts business, you know, for the next 15 years or so, grew, uh, and that's what the main income was. Uh, starting about 10 years ago, you know, back then it was tough to get rid of batteries, you know, the the copper. Uh, aluminum, uh, that sort of thing, just it wasn't a need for it yet. But about 10 years ago, steel started going up, the uh, the batteries, and now they're paying for used battery. They're paying 10, 12 dollars for used battery, a dead battery. I think it's now it's getting cheaper to recycle these metals than it is to uh, to mine new stuff. You know, I think it's. Uh, and there's so much of it, and, and, and batteries, you know, for the waste, we, uh, the oils, uh, uh, antifreezes, uh, all the waste products. We have companies like Little Dipper and uh, uh, Exide, uh, Interstate, that pick up the batteries. Uh, all the fluids are kept, you know, besides SGI, you know, I think we're one of the cleaner. A lot of times, you know, a vehicle gets so old and they don't stock, you know, new doesn't, doesn't produce it, doesn't... Uh, stock it, delete the parts. Some vehicles are, uh, even like Saturn has quit making them, uh, what, back in 08, 09, so it's tough to find uh, and expensive if you do have to get them produced again, and, and which makes the part, you know, the car irreparable or not worth repairing if you got to buy new sometimes. And it's, it's changed over the years and, and uh, you know, it, it's gone, you know, from parts to Parts recycling uh, to you know uh, still probably 75% parts income, but uh, but uh, the recycling end is, is definitely a good part of our income. Well, most of our vehicles you're talking uh, that we buy come from SGI Salvage, uh, whether it be a package. Yesterday, every day, every Wednesday, they uh, you have up until 7:30 that morning to bid on vehicles, uh, what they have per week that they've processed and they put packages up of 20, 30 vehicles and you bid on the package and a, and a unit price and uh, or you bid on the single vehicles so every Wednesday morning you find out what you or if you have gotten any and then we go in we have the two car hauler tow truck uh, that hauls them in and then we process them, start them, test them, run them through the shop and, and usually the good parts like the front end stuff, bumpers, fenders, headlights go up in the buildings, motors, trannies get in the lower shelves and stocks and we cover quite an area and people, whether if they, they don't come themselves, we do ship all over the place, all over the provinces, so not too many people get to play with what, they, uh, what they've always enjoyed throughout their life. So. So my brother's got quite a collection of Fords and I'm a Chevy guy, so we're not, we're not fighting over parts anyway. Look at this beautiful dryer. Gary, this is practically new. It's a steam dryer. 
Yes, it is. You guys get lots of donations just like this. You must do a huge business in appliances alone. We do. We do uh, roughly around $100,000 uh, the last year here in wow. used appliances. See, And mm -hmm. now it's important to remember, too, right, that this is open to everybody, not just businesses or contractors, but, but anybody can come on in. That's right. Yep. Any, anybody... Uh, regular shoppers yeah. are welcome to come in here. Helping out a, a, a great, well getting a great deal and helping out a great cause. What is the relationship, Gary, between Habitat for Humanity and the Habitat for Humanity Restore? Well the way it works is uh, everything that we get in here is donated. We don't pay for anything. Um, it covers the costs of us to run the store mm -hmm. and it also covers our administration costs all our overhead so what we have left goes to building homes for families ah so there you go so you come on in you get a great deal and you can feel good because you're helping out a great cause gary That's and the right. people at habitat for humanity and the restore have a passion for helping out the community oh i know exactly who you could sell this dryer to our lady in our next story has a passion as well she has a passion for clothing well specifically vintage clothing Off Duds is a secondhand and vintage clothing store. We do a majority of vintage clothing, but it's not all vintage. We do carry modern styles as long as they're sort of funky, unique. We like to sell things that are good quality, but primarily vintage, and we primarily do between 60s and 90s for vintage. I guess it means uh, vintage clothing means to me, you know, it's a history. It's like seeing where we came from. It's seeing what was popular. I'm really also fascinated with the way that things were made as compared to how things are made now. Wow, this looks beautiful. I like how the. I am sort of a born scavenger, so. I don't do consignment, I go out and do a lot of the sourcing f myself uh, for the shop. So all the secondhand stores, all the church sales, all the estate sales, all the small towns, all the flea markets, all the garage sales in the summertime. So I do take a bit of stuff in from people if they have things to sell, but I also do a little bit of s sort of estate management, I guess. Uh, not. Not necessarily that folks have passed away, but if they're cleaning out, moms are going into homes or stuff like that, then I go help them sort through some clothing. I will go out to, to houses and look at stuff. The uh, jumpsuit is late 70s, early 80s. Has this amazing cutout on the side, if you can show them that. Ooh, so lovely. I tend to tell people when they come in and they say something like, oh, I'm looking for a 40s, or I'm looking for a 60s outfit, or I'm looking for a 70s outfit. You know, decades didn't, style didn't automatically change at the stroke of midnight on, at the end of 1969 into 1970, right? So there's, there's a lot of blending. Basically speaking, you can determine like the silhouette, uh, where the waistline is, what the sleeve length is, what the material is, what the, the, sh the silhouette of it is just things in terms of like care tags. There weren't any, there weren't any care tags. It wasn't mandatory to have a fiber content uh, before 19, 1970, 60s or 70s in there. If you really get into it, there's uh, some good resources on the web where you can type in the names of old companies, and it'll it, it'll show you like when it was trademarked and what city and town it was from and. So it's pretty cool, you can do some pretty good investigations. So we've got Serena back with us now in this super awesome 60s bright orange mini dress. Looking fantastic and paired that with a pair of modern but classic boots. I really love 70s and 80s stuff. The crazy maxi dresses from the 70s, I love them. 
Uh, they're not necessarily the most breathable fabrics, so they don't sell as much as I love them. They don't sell, they don't sell a lot, even though maxi dresses are really sort of in fashion the last couple of years just the finding the breathable fabrics, but they're, you know, you can pull off the polyester in the winter, that's okay. Um, 80s I love just because of the audacity of it, like some of the things that I found, you just think like, what even was this person thinking when they made this outfit? I love it, I love the bizarre pieces the most. Next up we have the lovely Adina, and she is rocking an early 80s silver sequined, it's almost like a faux peplum on the side with this uh, hip ruching that's going on, and some awesome sort of flutter sleeves and high neck. I mean, there's, there's more than enough clothing out there. I quite often say there could easily be another six, half a dozen to a dozen secondhand clothing stores in this town or consignment stores. Not necessarily vintage, but just secondhand clothing. We all have closets full of clothing that we're not wearing that we don't want to donate because you paid good money for it. So you don't want to just give those away, right? You'd like to see a little bit of return on that. Sometimes, I think it was my birthday last year, somebody gave me a Sears 1972 catalog, uh, like a wish book from 1972. And I look back, especially the men's fashions, like, oh, we've gotten, we've gotten so boring, I think, in terms of men's fashions. The 70s with all the loud plaids and the pattern mixing and, you know, funky shoes and, Sometimes I wish we could live in that era again. I love it. <laughs> Gary, I'm so glad I was here today. I found exactly what I was looking for for a great price and I'm helping out a great cause. Now, Gary, we're going to have people out there today who A, are going to be coming to Habitat for Humanity Restore for their renovating needs or B, maybe they want to donate something. So how can they do that? The best thing to do before you come down is, is phone our receiving and uh, see if we can uh, use your donations first of all. Mm -hmm. um, and you can do that or you can uh, send us pictures to see, see what we, if we can use it as well. That's a great idea and the website is very helpful for that, sure. Yes, you can yeah. use, uh, go to habitatregina.ca and uh, follow the links from there. There you go. So you see that, uh, a great cause, great prices, helping out everybody. Everybody wins. Gary, yep. thanks so much for inviting us here yep. today. Thanks for coming down. Okay. Appreciate and it. Thank you for uh, viewing where we're always opening the door to great Saskatchewan stories right here on Max Magazine. If you have program ideas that you'd like to see on Local On Demand, write us at max.local at sastel.com. Max Local Programming is now available online at maxonline.sastel.com.